Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of the President and the First Lady, welcome to the Rose Garden on this beautiful day. Uh, the President and I are honored to be uh, joined by Secretary of Health and Human Services Donna Shalala and Dr. Harold Varmus, Director of the National Institutes of Health, and Dr. Harold uh, Shapiro, Chair of the National Bioethics Advisory Commission, uh, whom I will introduce in just a moment, and he will make remarks and present the President. I want to uh, also acknowledge uh, Dr. Jack Gibbons, uh, the President's advisor on science and technology, and also uh, in the audience, uh, Congressman George Brown of California, Congresswoman Connie Morella of Maryland, and the many uh, distinguished uh, guests who are present. There may be some I should single out and just don't know to mention. But to all of you, good morning and welcome to the White House. We're here, of course, because we all realize we must strive to find the sometimes delicate but always crucial balance between our unending search for knowledge and doing what is safe and morally right. Ever since scientists in Scotland successfully cloned a sheep, an adult sheep, in February, the President and those of us who work with him, along with the rest of the nation, have grappled with the meaning and significance of the discovery, and the meaning and significance, of course, of the many scientific, safety, ethical, and religious implications presented by the question of prospective, the prospective possibility of cloning of human beings. No one, however, has deliberated more on this issue than the men and women who are responsible for the report being delivered today to President Clinton members of the National Bioethics Advisory Commission. Over the last three months, they worked on an extremely complex issue at an extremely fast pace. They did a truly careful, insightful, and remarkable job. They are here today, uh, almost all of them, and they met with the President in the Oval Office a few moments ago. And I would like to ask all of the members of the Commission to stand and be recognized so that we might thank you as a group. Thank you all. And in a moment, as I mentioned, I'll introduce the chair of that Commission, Dr. Shapiro. But before I do, let me say that as we seek to protect ourselves, our nation, and our world from potentially dangerous and less understood technologies, we must also always remember the benefits our nation has received from science and technology research in general and biotechnology and cloning research in particular. After all, the ultimate purpose of science and technology, and overwhelmingly the result of science and technology, has been to improve human lives. Science and technology, whether public or private, in basic research or product development, have generated new knowledge, spawned new industries, created new jobs, cured illnesses, and improved our standards of living. Perhaps more than any other human endeavors, they are the twin tools needed to build a successful future. And nowhere is that more evident than in the field of biotechnology. Cloning technologies have been developed to clone cells and genes, which in turn have been used to develop medicines, diagnostic products, and vaccines to treat heart attacks, various cancers, kidney disease, diabetes, hepatitis, multiple sclerosis, cystic fibrosis, and other deadly and disabling diseases. The cloning of human cells and genes does not pose the same ethical questions as cloning an entire human being. And it really is essential that this important research continue. But it is equally important that in this time of great discovery, we be vigilant about making sure science and technology always remain positive forces in our life as a nation. That's why this report and the President's actions he will announce shortly are so important. Once again, I would like to thank the Advisory Commission for their hard work, and I'd like to thank in particular the hardworking chair of the Commission, and it is now my privilege to introduce the President of Princeton University and the Chair of the Commission, Dr. Harold Shapiro. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, 
On behalf of the members of the National Bioethics Advisory Commission, I am pleased to present the report you requested on the legal and ethical issues that have been raised by the sudden potential to clone human beings by a new technology with rather remarkable characteristics. As you can understand, this has been an unusually challenging assignment, in part because of the complexity and difficulty of the issues, in part because conflicting values are at stake, in part because Americans disagree on the implications of this new technology to the social and cultural values they hold dearest, in part because it's difficult to decide if and when our liberties should be restricted, and in part because of the ambitious timetable. In preparing our report, we made every effort to consult widely with ethicists, theologians, scientists, physicians, and as many citizens as possible with interests and concerns in this area. It is clear that the potential ability to clone human beings through the technique known as somatic cell nuclear transfer raises many important scientific, legal, and moral issues that require further review and consideration. Indeed, the Commission itself is unable to agree at this time on all the ethical issues that surround the potential cloning of human beings. On one key ethical issue, however, we are unanimous. It seems clear to all of us, given the current state of science in this area, that any attempts to clone human beings via somatic cell transfer techniques is uncertain in its prospects, is unacceptably dangerous to the fetus, and is morally unacceptable at this time. We believe there is a widespread moral consensus on this issue. Moreover, we think that more time for further public deliberation on the complex ethical and social concerns that surround the issue would be helpful. We therefore recommend that the current moratorium on attempts to create children in this manner be continued, and that you immediately ask for voluntary compliance in the private sector while federal legislation carefully crafted and with appropriate sunset provisions, banning the use of these techniques for creating children is formulated and considered. We feel strongly that most of the legal and moral issues raised can only be resolved by a great deal more deliberation and education. We hope that the sections in our report that outline the scientific, religious, ethical, and legal issues that are raised by these new scientific developments will form a useful basis for the ongoing deliberations and the broad public education that we believe is so essential. As I indicated, these are all exceedingly difficult issues, especially in a society where individuals hold various religious and moral perspectives. They are issues that go to the very nature of what it means to be human and to the very heart of what people think of as their families and their individuality. They are, in short, issues worthy of intensive and widespread debate. Time, however, is our ally in this regard, allowing for the accumulation of more scientific data from animal studies, as well as granting a period, a period of time for fuller national debate on the ethical and moral issues that are raised. Through such open deliberation, we as a society can achieve moral agreement where possible, or mutual respect where agreement cannot be achieved. And in this area, that is our view of what is the nub of the matter namely to achieve moral agreement where possible and mutual respect where agreement cannot be achieved. We have greatly appreciated the opportunity to begin what we hope will be a continuing dialogue, and we hope you will find our report both helpful and as responsive as possible in the time that was available to us. Mr. President, on behalf of the Commission, I am pleased to present our report to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Dr. Shapiro, for that uh, fine set of remarks and for your report. I thank all the members of the President's Committee of Advisors. Uh, uh, I'd also like to uh, thank Secretary Shalala and Dr. Varmus for being here today, along with the President's Advisor on Science and Technology, Dr. Jack Gibbons. And I thank Congressman Brown and Congresswoman Morella for being here and for their interest in this important issue. But mostly let me say again, I am profoundly grateful to the National Bioethics Advisory Commission and to Dr. Harold Shapiro for preparing this report on a difficult topic in a short period of time, requiring 
an extensive inquiry. Uh, your commitment and your courage in breaking new ground in policy is deeply appreciated. As the Vice President has said, and all of us know, we live in an era of breathtaking scientific discovery. More and more, our future in the world depends upon advances in science and technology. And more and more, the scientific community will influence the course of the future and the lives that our children will lead in the new century that is upon us. As I said in my commencement address at Morgan State University last month, our scientific explorations must be guided by our commitment to human values, to the good of society, to our basic sense of right and wrong. Nothing makes the necessity of that moral obligation more clear than the troubling possibility that these new animal cloning techniques could be used to create a child. That is why I acted in March to ban the use of federal funds for cloning human beings and to urge the private sector to observe the ban voluntarily while we initiated a national dialogue on the risks and the responsibilities of such a possibility. And why I ask this commission to issue this report. For three months, the commission has rigorously explored the scientific, moral, and spiritual dimensions of human cloning. It has talked to leading scientists and religious leaders, to philosophers and families, to patient advocates, and to the general public. From many opinion and beliefs, as Dr. Shapiro said, one unanimous conclusion has emerged. Attempting to clone a human being is unacceptably dangerous to the child and unex morally unacceptable to our society. I believe strongly that this conclusion reflects a national consensus, and I believe personally that it is the right thing to do. Today, I am sending legislation to the Congress that prohibits anyone in either public or private sectors from using these techniques to create a child. Until the day I sign the legislation into law, the ban on federal funding I declared in March will remain in effect. And once again, I call upon the private sector to refrain voluntarily from using this technology to attempt to clone a human being. I want to make clear that there is nothing inherently immoral or wrong with these new techniques used for proper purposes. In fact, they hold the promise of revolutionary new medical treatments and life-saving cures to diseases like cystic fibrosis, diabetes, and cancer, to better crops and stronger livestock. This legislation, therefore, will not prohibit the use of these techniques to clone DNA in cells, and it will not ban the cloning of animals. What the legislation will do is to reaffirm our most cherished belief about the miracle of human life and the God-given individuality each person possesses. It will ensure that we do not fall prey to the temptation to replicate ourselves at the expense of those beliefs and the lives of innocent children we would produce. Finally, the legislation will ensure that we continue the national dialogue we began three months ago and will provide the nation and the Congress another opportunity to take a look at this issue in five years. To make sure that all our voices are heard as we explore human cloning, the legislation specifically requires the National Bioethics Advisory Commission to continue its study and report back in four and a half years. At that time, we will decide how to proceed based on what has been accomplished and agreed upon and debated and discovered in the intervening period. Banning human cloning reflects our humanity. It is the right thing to do. Creating a child through this new method calls into question our most fundamental beliefs. It has the potential to threaten the sacred family bonds at the very core of our ideals and our society. At its worst, it could lead to misguided and malevolent attempts to select certain traits, even to create certain kinds of children, to make our children objects rather than cherished individuals. We are still a long way from understanding all the implications of the present discoveries, but it is our moral obligation to confront these issues as they arise, to act now to prevent abuse. Today, I hope other countries will see what we are doing and do the same, and I pledge to work with them to enforce similar bans around the world that reflect these values. Once again, let me say a heartfelt thank you on behalf of our entire nation to the National Bioethics Advisory Commission for the remarkable work you have done and the work you have agreed to continue doing in the coming years. Thank you very much.